uh, Hasib says, but as Islam doesn't explicitly teach original sin, the rhetoric of Islam treats everyone as sinful and embodies the submission of Islam in a sense. Yeah. And Probably a mindset inherited from Christianity. That's interesting. Yeah, it's... Hmm. It's um, really difficult to, like, move past feeling like um, this shame that just feels like it's, like, part of your sense of self, right? Like, especially, I think this is, I think something young women struggle with in particular, like um, just feeling just utter shame for your desires. Like I felt so ashamed for having desires at all, like not even specifically like for another woman, just in general. Mm -hmm. And, um, in particularly when you come from a more strongly religious background, um, the idea of being desirable was extremely shameful to me. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, because, um, especially like in Catholic school, you know, they're so strict about what you wear and with just kind of like this underlying tone of like slut shaming and, um, to the point that I went through a period of time where like I questioned my gender and I thought I was trans because I, but I don't feel that way now. And I think it was literally because I was so <sighs> trying to bury and suppress so many parts of myself that I just didn't even want to be a woman because it felt so shameful to be a woman and oh, wow. feel the way I do. So it was like, it's just better to be a man because it's just, it's so it just felt so dirty, I guess, to be a woman with a sexuality. Um, yeah. I didn't even yeah. want people to see me that way. Like I dress completely differently than I, how I do now because I wanted to just cover every part of my body. Like I would dress in extremely loose clothing. You couldn't see any shape of my form. Um, I dress like a guy most of the time. And I mean, I do kind of like that style. I'm from Seattle. So like grungy <laughs> style is just kind of how we dress. But um, it was more like shameful and like trying to make myself not seem attractive, like kind of actively mm -hmm. um, because that was scary to me. And I felt like I needed to protect myself from um, that from people desiring me because it's wrong, right? Like it's, there's so many things in the Bible about how you inspiring lusted men is horrible. Or Jesus says, you know, like pluck out your eyes if it causes you to um, lust or be in temptation and stuff. Um, and it's taken me a really long time to get past that. It literally wasn't until like last year that I started to feel comfortable wearing shorts and I'm not even from a fundamentalist family. <laughs> wow. I, sister, I told you, you would make a good Muslim. <laughs> you have all of the right things in place. Next thing you know. You know, it's funny because I think there's people like you that instead of ending up atheist, end up Muslim. Mm -hmm. Including potentially like, actually, I'm not going to mention. Including people I know that, well, I know like a woman that became Muslim and potentially this is this makes sense because hijab ap appealed to her and stuff like that um a lot of what you're saying actually so the interesting thing about islam is um other than like you know the the shame thing i think is very different in islam and i think islam muslims are proud of this because this is actually one of the characteristics of the religion it's actually mentioned that um you know the quran says jesus was not a monk and Muhammad made it like part of the religion to get married. Like you need to like enjoy your sexuality in context of marriage, which I know is part of Christianity too. But it it's like, it's different because sex is not shameful in Islam. Yes, you're not supposed to go around attracting men and you're supposed to cover up and hide your beauty. And, you know, to the extent that some women wear niqab and, you know, you have people like Ninja Mommy, that will go around saying Islam has dress code for men too. And it's like, I don't know mm -hmm. what she's talking about because the dress code for men is nothing. Basically. It's like, you have to cover. In from comparison. Your 
Yeah. Your na- it's like literally from your navel to your knee. That's the dress code for men. That's the minimum. It doesn't mean you go, you're supposed to go around like that. But like that's the aura. The aura is like the minimum, like, like what you have to cover. Whereas for a woman, it's everything. <laughs> it's like everything has to be covered. And some some women would consider, I know this is not a common opinion. Some women, some Muslims consider the voice of a woman is aura. Well, if you think yeah. about it, in, in Islam, a woman's not allowed to lead the prayer in front of men. A woman's not, I mean, things are kind of changing a bit, but I've never, as a Muslim, even pretty much almost once in my life, ever heard a woman reading Quran other than like a family member, like my auntie or my mom. Women don't read Quran for men. When I saw on YouTube women reading Quran, I'm like, whoa, women read Quran. This is a thing. I've never seen this before. And they're putting it on YouTube, which means, and you probably, if you look at the comments, there'll be lots of comments about men. Should, but like, I don't know if there's even a rule like that, that a woman's voice is like, there's some reasoning with why they're thinking like that. Maybe it's become part of the culture. Um, and of course, the, even the setup in the mosque and everything is segregated. The men, the women are behind and all that, or even hidden. You know, the, the Prophet's mosque had no barrier, but now you have barriers and things have changed too in some ways. And some some mosques, some sects have become more fundamentalist and some have become more progressive, right? So there's there's a change. But it's interesting how different Islam is in, in regard to that being proud of like sex being a good thing it's it's actually a part of islam that it's actually one of the selling points Mm. that yeah we're we're cool with this we talk about sex and this is okay even though again in reality i think there's a lot of problems especially with the the gender segregation especially with the fact there's no dating allowed marriage has become incredibly Mm. difficult it's gone in a very toxic direction right it's just marriage is is actually like a very difficult thing to implement and then it creates all these other problems now you have a lot like if you just date you can date someone and break up with them and then find someone else that's more suitable but in islam you're divorcing that woman now now you have to go through a divorce and now you've just complicated everything so much more or you're stuck in a bad marriage and you have kids now because it's your wife and you 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 know you're planning to be forever so i think it creates a lot more problems as well at the same time as you know but it's interesting how how from Christianity, there's, like I've heard this a lot. There's this shame aspect that's such a big thing in in Christianity. So it's, it's very interesting. And of course, Muslim men do feel shame too because a lot of Muslim men will be watching pornography. They can't get it. Not allowed to have a girlfriend. So that's obviously that's what they do. But like, there's a big, there's a lot of shame there, right? And I'd say even for me as a young Muslim man, that's why I got married at 21. Like I wanted to be in a relationship. Damn. And that, was the, that was the only way I could be in a relationship was to get married. That's the only mm-hmm. option. I mean, that's the only halal option, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and it wasn't, it wasn't for my family. It wasn't my parents. My dad and mom dated, right? They, had, they didn't have an arranged marriage. They had a love marriage, so-called love marriage. Uh, my dad even told me, why don't you guys live together? Don't get married. I'm like, no, I can't do that. He's like, if you like her, just just live with her. I'm like, no, I can't. I'm not allowed to do that, right? But anyways, um, that's, yeah, that would have been probably, I think that would have been a better option. But obviously, that option wasn't available for me at the time. So yeah, it, religion just creates a lot of unnecessary problems in the case of christianity it creates the problem of original sin and then it solves it here you go solution except jesus